I always find it disturbing when I see this swastika armband. It just sends a chill up my spine. So what were the aims of the Nazi party? Well, first things first, get rid of the Treaty of Versailles. Boop, gone. They wanted to gain land in which to settle all German-speaking uh, people. Now remember, the treaty took away their land, a lot of their land. So they wanted to get some land back. Now they wanted to take control of even more land outside of what they felt was owed to them for these people to expand into. So they wanted to expand Germany. They wanted to ensure that only people of German blood let me say that again. Only people of German blood can be citizens. This automatically excluded the Jews. But a huge misunderstanding that people have, and I hear this all the time, is that people sit there and they say, well, yeah, the Germans only wanted blonde hair and blue-eyed people. No, that is not correct. Get that out of your mind. The Germans only wanted pure German-blooded people. And just like in other countries, like for example in Italy, everyone assumes that all Italians are dark-skinned and dark-haired. That's not true because there are parts of Italy where Italians are blonde hair and blue-eyed. While the dominant gene in Italy is dark-haired and dark-skinned, there are other genes as well. You saw the same thing in Germany. The dominant gene is blonde hair and blue eyes. Most Germans are blonde hair and blue eyed, but not all. There could be other genes. So that's why they wanted just people of pure German blood. Now they only wanted to allow German citizens to have rights in German lands. And that is like insane to me because you had to be pure blooded German to have any rights. You had to have pure German blood to live in Germany. Imagine if in our country, if we only allowed American citizens to have American rights. And we know that's not true. We know that if people come here illegally, they're afforded the same rights as any US citizen. So that wasn't being allowed in Germany. Germany, they also gave, um, were given complete power to the government, which would care for its citizens. And we just learned about this yesterday. That's that fancy word called socialism. That's right. Socialism provides for the people, provides what they need for the people. And that's what Germany was doing. They were a socialist country with a dictator, and that dictator was Adolf Hitler, and we'll talk more about him in a minute, where they had complete control and they provided for the citizens and to make sure that they were being taken care of. They also required that all non-German citizens leave German land. So they didn't want outsiders only pure German-blooded people. And they required, and I think this is really important, they required that German citizens put the interest of the national community before their own. What this really means is that Germany is first and everything is after that. Germany comes before your family, before your loved ones, before God, before anything. Germany, the fatherland, as they called it, is the most important thing to the German people, and that had to take priority over everything. So what was Germany like in the 1930s? Well, this image here sums it all up, and I also think this one above me also sums it up. Look at those kids. Does that not break your heart, reaching out to Adolf Hitler like he's a celebrity? But Germany in the 1930s, Imagine a country letting its meanest and worst people take charge. And this is what happened. You had the propagandist Joseph Goebbels who was misleading the country with its bias, you know, with its biased propaganda, informing them that Jews were horrible, Adolf Hitler was a god, and that Germany comes before everything else. And he was extremely successful. You had Heimlich Hilmer who was... Uh, head of the SS and the brainchild behind the final solution of the gas chambers and killing all the Jews. You had Adolf Hitler um, and you're letting all these people, the meanest and the worst people, take charge. Then imagine giving those kinds of people the power of life and death over the whole entire nation. They use scare tactics to control and they did that 
through life and death decisions. Um, and then imagine a nation where children were taught to be tattletales and to tell the secret police about anyone who protests against their country, even their parents. And, you know, this was very true. I mean, school would start off with these kids having to stand up and report about things that they heard. They would report things that their parents said or their neighbors said or their parents' friends or people they heard on the street. And it was their duty to come into school and to tell on these people. Now, if a kid didn't, they were held accountable. They could be jailed. They could be executed and killed for not putting the fatherland, Germany, first. And that's how important Germany was to these people. That came first. Everything else came last. And if you read the book, The Boy Who Dared, you saw this exact thing in the book where Helmuth um, had to report when he came to school, where Helmuth was in discussions with people and he said that you can go to jail for saying the things that you're saying. When Brother Warbs um, came back from being in jail and he was uh, tortured for what he had said and he was speaking out. This was a very true thing that happened back then and that's how they were able to control people was through fear and intimidation and that's how people continue to do it today. Now a nation also like Germany burned its books of its greatest writers because it feared ideas and people who told the truth. They didn't want that. There was only one truth in Germany and it came from people like Adolf Hitler and his propaganda machine. And that's why they burned that information because if you control information, you can control the public. And without information, the public are just sheep. You herd them up and you can do anything you want with them. That's why information is so important and we still see that today where there are nations that take control of the information that's out there, of what, is, what kind of information is coming in or what kind of information is coming out. And that's how you control people. And then imagine this, a nation that kills people because it doesn't like your religion. If you are Muslim, you would have been killed. If you were Catholic, you would have been killed. You had to fit into their mold. What if, your, what if they didn't like your ideas? You spoke out, you were different, you were killed, you were considered a threat. Or because you were handicapped. And it didn't have to be just a physical handicap, you could have been mentally handicapped. They could have assumed or even thought for a minute that you were handicapped and you were eliminated because you were a threat and you were not perfect like in their crazy minds of what the perfect race had to be. That was Germany in the 1930s. Is that the kind of place you want to live? It's not the kind of place I want to live.